Hey, welcome back. This is Dan from NAGFAB Vehicle Power and Lighting. Today we're in a customer's 2025 Arctic Fox 990 truck camper. Uh, and we installed a mobile power system for him. So this customer really wanted to get a big inverter so that he could run his air conditioner as well as a microwave and uh, he's got a 120 volt modem, a few other things without having to turn the generator on every single time. So to accomplish that, we went with a Victron MultiPlus. It's a 12 volt, 3000 VA. And we've got 600 amp hours of Epic Essential Series lithium iron phosphate batteries. So the view you're looking at here is where we tucked all the equipment and it's actually behind and below the range. Uh, so I've got the range pulled out of here. It's super easy to pull in and out, just six screws. I've got the gas line connection here, and then we put in a Deutsch connector because uh, this range does have a 12 volt input that it needs, but we put a connector on that so it's easy. Again, you can take it in and out of here in, I think at like three minutes was the last time I had it out. Um, and then from the factory, there's cabinetry or really I should say kind of trim panels that are around this area. So across the bottom, up the back, and on both sides. None of those are really structural. They're just kind of in there, I think, to collect crumbs and just finish things off. We were going to maybe put some of those back in, uh, but in talking to the customer, we decided it's better to just leave those out uh, for airflow in here because we do have this 3000 VA inverter living underneath here. Decided to put the inverter on its or on the floor Ended up putting a piece of plywood underneath there just to make it a little bit more sturdy underneath the inverter. And that was really the only place it would fit. We had originally talked about mounting it on the wall where you see we've got the Victron Lynx unit here, but it wouldn't quite fit there. Uh, and also just the weight of the inverter. This guy does boondock, taking this on forest service roads and BLM land. So didn't want it falling off of the wall. In order to get the inverter into the location it is, we did have to relocate a few things. So from the factory, there is a gas line that comes kind of across the floor here and then up the wall and to the back. So we ended up reconfiguring the gas lines that are underneath this box here, put in a 90, um, and then ran a proper LP rated uh, rubber line that kind of goes up and around and is tucked away into a safe place here. Also this water line here, uh, originally this other half of it was swung out into this area, popped a hole in and tucked that around just to give ourselves a little bit more room. Also rerouted the shore power in and the cable TV, just kind of wire manage those a little bit easier so everything's tucked up and out of the way. So that gave us enough room to mount the Victron Lynx power in as well as the inverter itself. Now this Lynx Power In has been converted to essentially be a Lynx distributor. It just doesn't have the circuit board and the lights. So you can just add a, a few M8 bolts in there and then you can put fuses in this thing and it saves you, I don't know, I think it's something like 50 bucks. So since we don't have the, we don't have any need for the lights and the circuit board, we just went that route to save the customer a little bit of money. As far as the routing, you can see that uh, our battery box is actually right off here to the right. So the two, uh, Epic 300 amp hour essential series batteries are in the original battery box. We'll show you that in a second here. We've got a new 4 aught positive and negative coming in from the battery box. Uh, negative obviously wraps around, goes right to the Victron Lynx. The positive, we go into a 400 amp ANL fuse that's mounted on the back side of this piece of cabinetry here, and then into a master disconnect switch uh, that's accessible from the front. So if anything, if for any reason he needs to shut the system off, he can do so uh, without having to pull the range. And then from that switch, obviously, we go up into the Victron Lynx. Since we got exposed battery cables here, I did quickly design and 3D print a little cover just to keep that positive and negative safe so nothing hits in here. Uh, this is a knife storage rack across the top. The knives do have plenty of clearance. Tested that out, but just to make sure that there's nothing that can short between that main positive and main negative, we put a cover in there. As far as the fuse panel itself, we do have the Lynx distributor, or I should say Lynx power in, fully loaded up. So, first off, we got a 400 amp fuse in here feeding the inverter with 4 watt cable. There's also a 200 amp fuse in here that feeds the electric start 
for the onboard generator. So from the factory, those cables are completely unprotected and they run underneath the camper and they actually hang out a little bit down below. I wasn't comfortable with that, so we put that on a fuse. I've tested this a bunch of times. Uh, 200 amps is correct for the wire gauge and that starter doesn't pull more than 100, 120 amps peak inrush. So it's it's plenty. You should never have any issues with that blowing. Uh, but if you do have some sort of a short between the cables, obviously the fuse is going to keep that protected. All right, next we got our solar input with a 60 amp fuse. This camper has 600 watts of solar on the roof and a 100 volt 50 amp MPPT solar charge controller. That charge controller is located up in the closet. From the factory, these solar leads are unprotected at the battery. They were just hooked directly to the battery. Again, that's not correct. We wanna make sure that those leads are fused at our highest potential, which is at the batteries. Uh, so that's now solved with the way that we've done the install here. So from the factory, the three 200 watt panels that are on the roof are wired in parallel. We decided to reconfigure those so that they're wired in series. That just gives us a little bit better low light performance and shade performance. So even, you know, a day like today, it's extremely gloomy. We were still able to pull, I don't know, 25 watts or so uh, with barely any sun. Uh, when it was wired in parallel, uh, the solar was basically shut off. So that should give him a little bit more input, you know, early in the morning, later in the evening, and in under shade conditions. So in order to riot wire those in series, it's pretty easy. We just needed to make up a couple of MC4 jumper cables to, to get things reconnected on the roof. But then also we had to reconfigure the solar disconnect. So from the factory, these campers use a automotive style circuit breaker with exposed terminals, which is fine when the voltage coming in from the roof is, you know, at max 20, 25 volts. Uh, but now that we've got the panels wired in series, uh, you could have 60 plus volts coming down from the roof. And so we want to make sure that there's no way to touch that because that's starting to get into the realm of being uh, dangerous. So we pulled out the factory breaker and put in a properly rated dual pole DC breaker disconnect, kind of reconfigured and cleaned up the wiring in the closet where the charge controller lives. And then finally, going back to our fuses here, the last one that we've got is a 60 amp fuse that's going off to our DC loads. So that feeds into the factory 12 volt fuse panel to supply all the lights and everything in here. Also supplies power to the jacks and the slide out. So you can see we got the Victron links fully populated, but we did want to make sure we left enough room over here that we can possibly add an MRBF fuse holder because this customer is considering putting in a 12 volt air conditioner in the future and also possibly doing some DC to DC charging from the truck. So we wanna make sure we left enough room to be able to extend that if necessary. Also right now, there's no shunt in this system. We're just relying on the shunts that's built into the batteries since the batteries have Bluetooth. But again, we wanted to leave a little bit of room on the, the left side of the Victron links here so that he can add a shunt if he decides to in the future. Off down to the right here, there's also a little cubby. That's where we tucked away the control panel for the MultiPlus. So it's tucked up out of the way, so we won't really be able to hit it if he's storing anything in that cubby, but it's also easily accessible. That allows him to turn the inverter on and off or into charger only mode and also set the input current limit. So if he's got the uh, shore power plugged into say a 15 amp outlet, uh, the inverter isn't gonna overdraw and, and trip the breaker on whatever outlet his shore power plug is plugged into. Now, because this camper has a generator from the factory, it has a transfer switch that's located underneath the sink area on this model. Uh, so we were able to tie the output of the transfer switch into the input on the MultiPlus and then the output of the MultiPlus back to the factory AC fuse panel that's uh, supplied with this camper. So with that, it's fully automatic as far as the input going into the camper. So if he fires up the generator, the transfer switch under the sink will route that power from the gener generator into the MultiPlus and the MultiPlus will do its MultiPlus things. So it'll start charging the batteries and pass that through to the electrical system and also has the power assist feature so that it can ease the load on that generator if necessary. 
Also, if we plug in a shore power, same thing, that transfer switch is going to automatically route the shore power to the input of the multi-plus. The multi-plus will do the multi-plus things. And then if there's no input from generator or shore power, obviously this is an inverter. And so the output is going to be fed to the fuse box and, and be able to supply all the 120 volt appliances in this unit uh, with power from the batteries. So a couple other modifications we did to the OEM wiring in this camper. First of is we pulled out the OEM converter charger. Uh, we didn't want to have any issues with a power loop where the batteries are powering the inverter, the inverter is powering the factory converter charger, the factory converter charger is then powering the batteries, and then you've got a vicious power loop. We could have just unplugged that converter, but the customer wanted to save a little weight and gain a little bit of room back in that location, so we ended up pulling it out completely. The other thing that we did is that we disconnected the power input from the truck. Uh, that would normally charge the lead acid batteries in this camper. So because, because we've switched over to lithium, those lithium batteries will suck in as much current as it possibly can through that wire to the truck. And the alternator in that wire to the truck was never intended for that. If, if we want to do alternator charging, we're going to add a dedicated DC to DC charger. So what we did there is actually just added an inline fuse holder and then just pulled the fuse and uh, tape the fuse to the cable, put a label on it so that if this is ever undone, you can easily reconnect that power input power from the truck, but we've safely disconnected it for the system that we have here. So that's about it. We've uh, done some testing here with the solar. We've been running the air conditioner and the microwave simultaneously, no issues. We've been running the charger function in the MultiPlus through both shore power and off of the generator. Everything seems to be working well, so I think I'm going to just throw this stove back in and give the customer a call, have them pick up this unit. So again, this is Dan from NAGFAB Vehicle Power and Lighting. We're located in Marion, Iowa. So if you're anywhere kind of in the eastern Iowa, western Illinois, southwest Wisconsin area, uh, and you're looking to add solar or an inverter or any sort of battery system to your camper, feel free to reach out at nagfab.com. We'd be happy to get you set up. So thanks for watching.